Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 28 of my Java video tutorial series. Today, we're going to talk about layouts inside of Java Swing. And I'm going to show you all the different layout classes that are available, or at least I'm going to show you three of them. Now, of course, we're going to need to import ourselves some libraries. So I'm going to bring in Java Ot, and I'm going to show you the border layout. And also, I'm going to show you all the things I didn't show you in regards to how to use the flow layout. Java Ot flow layout. And the flow layout is what we've been using all along. And basically, the way that it works is it just puts everything exactly right next to each other. So as you add a component, it just continues to cycle and put those components components on the right side of whatever component you previously put into the panel. So we got all the same stuff here we've seen before. Of course, you know how to create buttons, and this is the size of our frame, and this is the location, which is going to be in the center, and this is going to handle closing, and this is the title for it. So let's get into the flow layout and exactly what we're going to do with this guy. Just like before, of course, I'm going to go J panel, and I'm going to call this the panel equals new J panel. Create myself a panel that's going to go inside of the frame. Now, one thing I haven't showed you in regards to this is you can actually define the flow layout alignment, meaning you can either position it to the right, the center, or to the left. And how you do that is just go the panel and then go set layout. And we're going to go new flow layout. That's why we needed to import that library. And let's say that I want everything to go to the left flow layout dot left. And that will make every component that I add automatically justify to the left. Now, of course, if I wanted to justify to the right, I would do this. Just type in right or center. I would just type in center, of course. Now, let's see exactly what this looks like. We can go button one is equal to new J button. And we're just going to call this button one. And then we'll also create another button in here so you can see exactly how that lays out. So just change this to two and change this to two. And then down here we have this actually being added to the panel. And this makes the frame visible on the screen. But of course we have to go the panel, add, and then go button one. And then we have to also add button two. And there we did. So let's see what this looks like left justified. And there you can see there's the two buttons. If you can't see this, you can view it full screen. This is an HD video. And there everything is aligned to the left side of the screen. And then of course you can align it to the right side of the screen, but I figure you know how to do that. Another thing you can do that I haven't covered is you could also define the pixels that actually separate the different components. So right here where I have flow layout, I could also use alignment. What the heck, let's just make this right. And then after I define that, I can define both a horizontal or vertical gap. Well, there is not gonna be a vertical gap in this situation. And the first thing you would define is a horizontal. So let's say that I would want to put 30 pixels inside of there, and then let's just put 20 inside of there for vertical, which isn't going to do anything to it. But what the heck, let's just see what happens. And there you can see everything's right justified. However, there's going to be 30 pixels in between these two guys right there. And now you are an expert in how to use the flow layout, because that is pretty much all you can do with it. So I'm going to jump in here now and cover the border layout. Now the border layout, how it differs from the, the flow layout is you put components or panels. Remember, you can also put panels in there in different positions in either the north, south, east, west, or center of a frame. Still gonna use JPanel just like we have in the past. And to use the border layout, you have to come in here and go set layout and then go new order layout because the flow layout is the default. So you have to actually define your layout tool you're going to use here because it's different than the default. And then we're just going to go button one is equal to new J button. And I'm just going to come in here and create a whole bunch of these and then change this to two, three, four, five. And then just to show you something, this is a common error people use with the border layout is they try to throw buttons into the same exact space. So how you would actually add these buttons after you create them to this border layout is you type in add and then you would go button one and then you have to define where it's going to go. So you go border layout dot north. Remember, north, south, east, west, center. Only positions you're allowed to play with this. So now we're going to come in here and we're going to go button two. And we're going to put it also in the north and let's see what happens. And as you can see, button two shows up here and button one does not show up here. The reason why is whenever you're throwing things into these different frame areas, as you did here, you tried to throw them both into north. And the second button that you tried to throw in there just overwrites the other one. And as you can also see, it completely fills up the total top of the screen. Now, there's multiple different ways you can handle this. And let's just go in here and just throw everything into all of the different separate components. You can also throw multiple different components into different parts. I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's go south, east, west, and then you have center. So all these different components are all going to be in separate parts of this frame. And we're just going to go three, four, five. Now you're going to get to see what that looks like. 
And as you can see, there's the buttons in the north, south, east, west, and center. And as you can see, whenever you put all these different components in here, center is always going to be the largest area inside of this overall frame. But what if you wanted multiple different buttons to show up in, say, the north quadrant? You can do that. What you need to do instead is throw the buttons into a panel and then install the panel into it. Just going to get rid of this all together. I'm going to create a new J panel, and I'm just going to call this the panel 2 is equal to new J panel. And then we're going to go the panel two dot add and I'm going to say button one and then I'm also going to add button two to that panel and then to make everything go into the north quadrant I'm going to go the panel dot add and I'm going to add the panel to the north quadrant and if we execute that you can now see that both of the buttons show up in the north quadrant and that's pretty much all you can do with the border layout now whenever you use all these different layout tools you use a whole bunch of them very often together and that allows you to create pretty much anything and now we come to the box layout. Now with the box layout, it's more common to avoid this panel usage altogether. So we're just going to delete all that. And also, you normally don't use this guy right here. I'm going to use a different one because this is a box. And a box layout just uses horizontal or vertical rows of components. And in this situation, we're going to go this dot add the box. So that's the common usage whenever you're using a box layout. Now, of course, you have to define it, and you type in box, and I'm going to say the box equal to box, and I'm going to create a horizontal box, and that's how you create a horizontal box. Pretty simple. You could also create a vertical box just by putting vertical inside of here instead of horizontal, and put a dot inside of there instead. So now we created our little box here. I'm going to add different buttons to it, so I'm going to go the the box dot add button one and of course to be able to do that we're going to need our buttons defined inside of there so there we got that i'm going to copy that and i'm going to paste four of these different buttons in here and i'm going to call this two three four of course and if we execute that there are my buttons displayed horizontally on the screen all equal width apart now, so there's a lot of other neat little things you can do with this guy. You can also separate these different buttons using what are called struts, which is just a definition of distance between all these different buttons. That's all it is. So how you do that? You just go the box dot add, and I'm going to go box dot create or horizontal, and I'm going to go strut. And let's say I want these to be four pixels apart. Just throw that in there, and it's pretty much just defining a four pixel difference between or distance between these components. You just throw it in there, execute it. And there you can see I threw four pixels in between all of these different components. Now, you might not always want to use struts because it can cause problems where it'll actually throw these different guys right off the screen. So if I change this to 40 and execute that, you can see my button actually isn't being displayed on the screen. It moved it right off of the frame at least. So that's not always good thing. But you could also go and define what is called a glue. And what a glue does is it will just move a component over to the maximum amount that it can possibly move it. So I'm just going to copy this. So let's say that we want to get rid of this all together so that this shows up well on the screen. And we're going to just come and come in here and get rid of this. And then I'm going to change strut to glue. And you're going to see what this guy does. There you can see the button has been moved the maximum space away from this other component right here. However, it is still contained inside of the frame, which is a good thing. There's something else to play with. And then you can also, whenever you have multiple of these boxes on the screen, I'm later on in the tutorial series, I'm going to use a whole bunch of these all at one time so you'll be able to see what this looks like. But you can also define not only the horizontal pixels, but you could also define horizontal and vertical like we saw previously with the flow layout whenever we were playing around with that. And to do that, that, what you need to do is create a rigid area and then inside of this you're going to define let's say 30 that's going to be your horizontal space and let's say 20 so this would be as if you had multiple different boxes on a screen and you wanted them to be 30 pixels apart and also 20 pixels on a vertical basis however you have to pass this what's called a dimension which we've seen in numerous times in previous tutorials and you just go dimension and wrap this whole entire thing up inside of that like this and then you can execute it and there you can see everything's positioned in an odd way using 30 pixels like we talked about before. So there is all of the different methods that are available for flow layouts, border layouts, and box layouts. All of the code is available underneath this video. It's heavily commented. Go play around with it and you'll better understand these different layout tools that are available to you. In the next part of the tutorial, I'm going to cover all the other layout tools that are available to you. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.